after the beginning percussion year. Presenting this session are clinicians Eric Rath from Panhandle High School and Ralph Hanks from Mitchell INT. Ralph Hanks and Eric Rath, Eric Rath sorry, are the co-authors of Beyond Basic Percussion, a collection of 10 percussion ensembles geared to prepare junior high students for high school. It is published by Tap Space. Mr. Hanks teaches band at Mitchell Intermediate in the Woodlands and Left and Drum, a motor skill development program for special needs children. Mr. Rath is the band director at Panhandle High School and also teaches percussion at Amarillo College. He is active as a composer and marching band arranger. Please enjoy. All right, good morning. Who knew they had 8 o'clock clinics? I had no idea. So, welcome to the Beyond Back of the Room. Let's get right into it. So, if y'all know the typical percussion stereotypes, I always think about Animal from the Muppets. You always see that in the, in the, the percussion rooms, all that, I'm crazy, I'm out of control. So you can see that these are typical buzzwords I hear when I ask my friends, what do you think about percussion sections in seventh and eighth grade? We always get these kind of things about them. And so you gotta ask yourself, why are they like that? Could it be because they, you don't give them enough attention? Could it be because they don't have any direction from you? The biggest one is, they're not dumb. That's the biggest one we all know, that they can tell when they're just being kept busy. So if you find yourself asking yourself, all the time, uh, these kinds of questions. Why are they so, why are they always like that? Why can't they just stay still? Just put your sticks down, stop moving. If you're always finding yourself asking yourself that, well, why don't you also ask yourself the same question once it pops up? Are the percussionists getting what they need, or am I just keeping them busy? And you gotta make sure you be honest with yourself about that answer. Then we move on from there, because you can see from my super awesome graph, that we have the, the, the progression for a typical flute player or a trumpet player going from the beginning of that year into the next year. It's a pretty seamless progression. It goes right from um, their normal studies in the beginner class to Remington studies to all that stuff that we all know, all that kind of thing. But then when it comes to percussion, there always seems to be a gap where they assist the beginner band year. It's always to get all this attention, all this attention. Seventh grade, go to the back. Be quiet. Go practice on your own. Stop messing around while I do this other stuff. Or, here's a flute part, roll the notes while I work with the flutes. And like I said before, they can pick up on that. They know that, oh, well, no one's paying attention to me. I don't know, the percussionist in the room, when you were 10 years old, if no one told you what to do, what'd you do? You threw stuff. You messed around. You made fun of people. You wrote notes. You slept. You did your homework. And so no wonder they're getting off task because we don't have a task for them. So the two parts of today's clinic are going to be part one is going to be maximizing your full band daily drill, which we all do. And then part two, We'll be advancing beyond the basic technique through using the percussion ensemble. And before we go on to the next section, I want to go ahead and recognize our performers for today. You want to go ahead and stand up real quick? All right. We really appreciate all the hard work that you guys put in. You'll really, you'll, you can tell when they're up here. They all look nice and confident. They're going to do a great job for us. And then here we are. So, you guys ready? To have a seat? Sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on to part one, maximizing your full band daily drill. So basically, what I've been seeing through when I was a private lesson teacher, when I go to the different the different band halls, or you were a private lesson teacher, we typically see, typically see three different kinds of involvement. The first one we see is kids just being babysat. There's little to no attention. I remember plenty of times in my band when I was in seventh grade, sorry Mr. Chapman, if you're here, but he would basically just tell us to go in the closet. We call the percussion room the closet. And so we'd go in there, we could hear the Remingtons, we could hear all the Clark studies, but we weren't a part of it. So I was in the back of the room, so of course I drew little stick figures on the wall, got into kids' mallets and switched to mallets, you know, I did all kinds of bad stuff, so of course I got in trouble, so I was labeled the bad kid. Of course I was. Then we had the next one, which was just keep them busy. Well, if you want to give them a flute part to keep them busy, sure, that's great. Now, I'm never going to say that it's not good for them to roll on marimba, but we all know that's a very small part to what we could be doing. And so if all you have them doing is doubling the flute parts, D, 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 they're going to get bored extremely fast because flute tr players, trumpet players, there's a lot pedagogically for them to think about. But these guys, is like, hit that bar, 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 hit that bar. okay, I'm done. That's really it, so we want to move on from there. So the best one, in our opinions, is to keep them fully engaged to where they're not just being played here, they're not being pacified, you actually have a separate curriculum for them, specifically designed for them to either coincide with what you're doing in your full band or they're separate. And so,